All right, here we go. Um, so we're going to talk about free energy and cell potential today. This involves one new equation, which is delta G equals negative. And this is where I kind of fall into a problem here is a lot of times I'll forget that negative sign. So be careful with that. That guy does exist. Um, so keep that in mind. N, which is moles of electrons times Faraday's constant, which is listed on your sheet. And then that gives you the, the E um, prime. All right. So when we look at these, when we talked about batteries way back, we talked about how we can generate electrical energy. You guys measured that in volts. You compared that standard reduction potential values in volts for the half reactions, and then you were able to figure out what the potential was for the overall reaction. So when those are thermodynamically favorable, we call those galvanic or voltaic cells. They're going to result in a negative voltage. Um, if they are negative voltage, then they're not thermodynamically favorable. And those things are called electrolytic cells. Unfavorable reactions then require an input of electrical energy. So for example, when you want to recharge your battery in your cell phone, you have to plug that into the outlet because at that point you're trying to make everything go back the other direction you've got to add electricity in to make that happen then as you're using your battery it's going the usage of your battery for whatever it's powering that's going to be positive voltage so that would be a galvanic cell okay so batteries are shown a lot of times in circuits like this you don't need to know that for the test, but it's just something that's kind of out there. To calculate the voltage for a cell, though, we look at those standard potentials. And um, I gave you a, uh, one of those on the previous page of your notes. You should be able to see that right mirrored there on the next page. And those are your half reactions in order for most likely to be reduced at the top to the half reactions that are least likely to be reduced. Substances then that are least likely to be reduced are the ones that are most likely to be oxidized. So the ones at the bottom of that list are most likely to be oxidized. Each half reaction then has a corresponding voltage and then you can calculate the value by subtracting. All right, cell potential then is calculated by taking the sum of the voltages, best reduction reaction and the voltage for the re oxidation reaction. Note this voltage for the oxidation reaction has the same magnitude for the reduction reaction for that substance, therefore it's negative. So you also have to multiply one or more of the reactions in order to balance the electrons and get the magnitude of the voltage it does not change because it's an intensive property. Since the voltage can be used to predict the thermodynamically favor favorability of this, it is proportional to Gibbs energy. So we can use the E voltage to calculate Gibbs free energy through this formula. So F is called the Faraday constant. It is given in coulombs per mole of electron. The constant then comes from the charge on the electron, which is this value, multiplied by Avogadro's number. And then the E prime is the voltage. For the units to cancel, you need to have know that one volt equals one joule per coulomb. This is listed for you on your um, equation sheet. And Gibbs free energy is typically given in kilojoules. Okay. So here is our first reaction. We are going to use delta G equals negative N F E prime. And these are primes. That means that they're happening at um, 270, or I'm sorry, 298 Kelvin. All right, so 
when we calculate this, we need to figure out what our delta G is. The first thing we need to figure out is moles of electrons. So we need to, the moles of electrons then are how many electrons are getting changed or moved back and forth with this. Three. Yes, three. So you're here. This is gaining three electrons from this to become these. Okay. So that value is going to be three times Faraday's constant. And again, this Faraday's constant is listed on your equation sheet. You do not need to memorize it. You just need to be able to locate it on there. And this is going to be times the E prime, which they gave us in the problem here, which is 0 0.70. So here our delta G ends up being negative 2.0 times 10 to the fifth. And that's going to be kilojoules. So is this favor, uh, thermodynamically favorable? Yes. yes. Yes, because your delta G it's is negative. negative. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> The next one here, we need to figure out which one of these is our, um, which one is getting reduced and which one is getting um, oxidized. The first one is getting reduced. No, the second one's getting reduced. No, the first one's getting oxidized. Too many times. That's what I just said. How do you know that? Because, because it's the smallest. It's, it's right. Small. Okay. So this one is getting reduced. And this one is getting oxidized, which means that we need to take this equation and we've got to flip it around. Okay. So your H2S is going to come over here. Then we need to add these things in. Remember, we're flipping this guy around. I'm sorry, you think I'm not too All right. I need to get rid of this right here and here because they're going to cancel out. I wanted to put them there so that you could see what they were because we're going to need them. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of those and get rid of this. And this is our overall reaction then. All right, how many moles of, um, I'm sorry, calculate the value for E. What do we have to do to this value? Make it negative. Make it negative. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add these two values together, and that's going to give us our value for delta E. So 1.24 volts. How many moles of electrons are transferred? Uh, two. Two, yep, right here. We got that from the equation. And then calculate the value for delta G in kilojoules. So we're going to have our delta G here. That's going to equal, don't forget your negative sign here. That's something that I often do is forget that negative sign. So be better than me. So negative moles of electrons is 2 times Faraday's constant, 96485. times 1.24, and that's going to give me delta G. My delta G is going to equal negative 2.4 times 10 <laughs> to the minus 2. Thermodynamically favorable or not? Nope. 
Or yes, my bad. My goodness, please. Yes, thermodynamically favorable. <laughs> You're not exactly one to speak about books, thing, Alan. Oh, All right, questions <laughs> about that guy. That's good. I actually get it. A new equation. I still think you might have a new equation. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to do it. Well, this I think you did that last week. I don't know what you did. Last week or you know what happened? The week I was gone. I told her. I told her. I'm like, let's come in. I'll and then she, she, she shows up at 7.55. <laughs> Not at 7.55. All right. So we're going to talk about 9.9, .9, which is self-potential under non-standard conditions. This brings in a new equation. Okay which is, this is under standard conditions, this is under non-standard conditions. That's what the difference between the prime is here, okay? So this is no longer at 298 Kelvin. So when, at this point, we were looking at these under standard conditions, and that's what I had you do your battery at, was one molar solution, we have approximately that amount of pressure in here, and the temperature was close to 25 Kelvin. So when you did your battery, you were doing it under these standard conditions. That's why I made you figure out what a one molar solution was, and I made you make that. Okay. In the real world, it's rare that the conditions perfectly match these standard conditions. So the cell potential is going to change from our predictions. And this is why... A lot of times your batteries don't end up working at colder conditions because you're not at this prime condition here. So the colder the, it works, the less potential you have out of that battery. Turn these comments on again. Let me get my eraser back. Okay. So when we are looking at these, the cell potential again is going to change um, with the concentration because the concentration is going to change as the battery continues to run as well. So that voltage um, is the force that drives that reaction towards equilibrium. When the reaction is further from equilibrium, the, it has a higher magnitude for the potential. But eventually the batteries, that's why the batteries get weak is because eventually they get to that equilibrium point and then they don't function anymore. So electrochemical cells are not at equilibrium. They are moving towards it. Since the reactions are not at equilibrium, we, can use, we can't use this Le Chatelier principle to predict how it's gonna react when the pressure or concentration or temperature changes. Since we know that the standard cell potential is calculated at one molar, one ATM, we know that the value for Q, the reaction quotient would have to be one and the cell reaches equilibrium, K and Q equal each other. So the magnitude of the cell potential decreases to zero. A value for the cell potential of zero means that the reaction has reached equilibrium, the battery's dead. Nernst equation then is this guy right here, and that's gonna show the relationship between cell potentials at non-standard states and standard states. So you should be able to explain quantitatively how non-standard reactions will affect the voltage of the cell. So that's important for changes in the concentration, as you should understand how to change Q and how that's going to deal or make the voltage change. So when the conditions deviate or change from those standard conditions, Q is less than one in a direction that takes the reaction further from equilibrium, where Q equals one, the magnitude of the cells will be greater than the standard cell potential. So if we look at the reduction reaction of zinc here, we have um, zinc and we have calcium. So these are their standard reduction potentials. Which one of these is going to get reduced? Uh, 2.87. Okay. Calcium. Yep. And then this one will get oxidized. Okay, so um, is that right? 
Oh, no, no, no. This is having it run opposite because this is non-standard. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So they're telling us that this is our reduction and this is our oxidation. Oh, yeah, they've already got it flipped for us. Yeah. Okay, so this is reduced. This is oxidized because they already flipped it around for us. Because this one, if they would have had this as reduced, it would have been flipped around the other way. Does that make sense? And then this value would be more negative. They already flipped it for us. Okay. So, yeah, this is our oxidation. This is our reduction. So our overall balanced equation is this guy. All right. So now we've got to figure this out. The value for K for this reaction then is going to look like this. So we've got our delta G here equals, and this is our NFE. That's what we just learned on the, in the previous problem. Okay. And that's going to give us our K. That's when we're at equilibrium. So we can calculate that. So they got the two from the two electrons here. This is your Faraday's constant, and this is your overall value here. And that's going to give us our delta G, which is also going to equal, um, so that's our delta G for that, okay? So now we can plug that in. Let me see if I can get this a little bit bigger for you. Where's my, there it is. Okay. So if we want to solve for K here, Oh, yeah, this is that rat leak equation. We studied that one back in 95. Okay, so um, remember that we had back before break, we had delta G equals negative RT and then the natural log of K. So the, what they've done here is they are solving for K. So if you want to solve for K, you would divide both sides. So the natural log of K would equal negative RT over, no, I'm sorry, screwed that up. Would equal delta G over, and it was negative, RT. So then if you wanted to find out what K was, you'd go E to the negative this guy. Okay? So they're solving for K here. So here is your K value once they do that. And remember, K is going to equal the concentration of your products over the concentration of your reactants. Now, why did they not put the zinc and the calcium in this equation, even though they appear up here? Um, you can focus. The zinc and the calcium are not up there because they have no. Calcium. Ah, yes, they are solids. Okay. So remember. Solids and pure liquids don't appear in the K expressions. So because these are solids, they're not going to appear in your K expression. So it's simply going to be this aqueous amount, which is your product's concentration, over the aqueous amount of this, 
which is your reactant, okay? So this value is going to equal those two things. With standard conditions, then, that would equal one, because we said that those would be one molar. So if we change those conditions, then, So if we change those conditions then, and we have a two molar zinc here, the Q value is going to change to 0.5. The new Q value then is further away from one, therefore the cell potential will increase compared with the E prime value. So E equals E prime minus RT over NF natural log of Q. So here's how we fill that in. So our E is going to equal 2.12. You'll have a higher voltage here when you have a higher number down here. If we flip that around, though, and now we have our 2 molar calcium instead of zinc, then it's going to switch the other direction. Your voltage will actually be less. So when you look at these, okay, a concentration cell then is another type of electrochem cell as opposed to galvanic cell that we talked about. It's similar to the cells that we've seen in the last like 9-7 and the ones that you built, but you have the same half reactions in both beakers, with each with a different concentration. So by taking these and having them different concentrations, you can still run the reaction. So here we would have our copper. We're going to have the voltage here, and we can calculate what that voltage would be. So in a concentration cell, the E prime value would be zero because the reactions at the anode and cathode are the same. So here are kind of a, a summary of those different reactions that we've looked at. All right, so if we consider this cell, we've got 100 mils of one molar iron two and one beaker and an iron electrode and 100 mils of one molar manganese two and another beaker with a manganese electrode. The beakers then are connected with a porous disc, which is like your salt bridge. And the electrodes are connected by a wire to a voltmeter. This is the voltage that you end up with. Okay. Describe the effect on the value of Q and the voltage when the following occur. So now we have our Q. Remember, we've got our products over reactants. Our products then um, are... Our, um, we'll end up with this. We have 0.1 here and I'm going to get 0.2. So this is going to equal 0.5. Point one's here. I got that.
Where did I get point two from? I've never heard that. <laughs> I've never heard that. No. I was much more a cooler as a child. Much more cooler. I had. Um, Did you go to school by any chance as a child? I'm so sorry to be a teenager. I was much more cooler. I never played with my little pony. That's why. Okay. So if we had, if we were looking at moles here, right? If we, here's our molar value here. And we had, this was 0.1, right? Because 0.1 times 1 is 0.1. And then here, you're adding in another mole. Another mole. So that's going to be another 0.1 which would give you 0.2. That makes a lot more sense. And then this, we didn't add anything. We didn't add any manganese in, so it's still at 0.1. This is your manganese. Because this is your, this is your iron. Iron is on, is, is a reactant. So it's products over reactants. This is your products. This is your reactants. Okay. So, therefore, this is 0.5. Your voltage is going to increase. Because you're further away from equilibrium. All right. The next one, we're adding in 100 mils of distilled water to this. So, we're making this more dilute. Okay, so we've got um, so it would be point five at top. Would it matter? I thought these were moles. Yeah, it does matter though because it's going to change the concentration. Because you asked, then there's 200 liters. <laughs> I don't remember that. I was cool. All right. So if we add in the distilled water. We're going to decrease the concentration of this guy here. Okay. So his concentration is going to go down. That's going to cause the value for Q to increase. If Q increases, then our voltage decreases. Yep, this is equal. Yep. Yes. Huh? Yeah, because you're adding it to both. So you're not going to change it there. Yeah. All right, let's try one more. This is probably all we have time for. I'll probably have to finish the next one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we've got zinc concentration cells. 
We've got Zn2 plus in the left beaker. Did I follow that though? I don't think I followed them. All right. <laughs> okay, so here I've got Zn. Both of these are zinc anodes. This one is going to Zn two plus plus two electrons here. That's going to happen here. This is going to end up being, well, we've got to calculate that. So we've got to figure out what this is going to be. We've got our electrons. They're going to be traveling this direction. In this one, it's going to pick up those two electrons. It's going to add it to the Zn2 plus in here, and it's going to form Zn here. That's supposed to be an arrow there. All right. So they want us to calculate the cell potential when the right beaker is filled with two molar Zn2 plus. So right beaker is here. 2.0 molar is here. So our E prime, or our E, is going to equal E prime plus, or nope, not plus, sorry, my bad. Minus RT over NF times the natural log of the concentration of our product over the concentration of our reactant. All right. So our E prime here is going to be zero because we have the same stuff in both beakers. The oxidation and reduction reactions are the same. So we have, um, those are in the same beakers. This is gonna be one molar here. Because it's standard, that's our standard can, uh, cell. And they told us one molar here. They told us two molar over here for this one. They gave it to us in the problem. All right. So now our R value that we used for this is 8.314. We're going to multiply that by our temperature. Make sure that that guy is in Kelvin. Over two, because we've got two electrons that are getting transferred here. Is this supposed to be negative or not? The negatives right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, easy. Shut up. You couldn't do this. Times <laughs> 96485, which is Faraday's constant, times the natural log, and we've got our products. Two over one. So it's just two. It's one over two, actually. Oh. <laughs> you couldn't do that. <laughs> you can't even do that. Guess what? Guess what the fail stands for? First attempt in learning. It's good to okay. fail. <laughs> All right. So when we do that, we end up with 0 0.0089 volts. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And I think that's all I've got the patience for for today. So we'll finish 910 tomorrow, do a little happy dance, and we'll be done with this unit. Yay! I think we'll do progress check on Wednesday, and then we'll have your final on Monday. Thursday, Friday. No, no there's no Friday. Friday. Oh, crap. Oh, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, guys, sounds good. Monday, Tuesday, sounds good. From now on, after Friday,